open intelligence is synonymous with the nature of our mind, that no matter how hard we look, we can't find a separate mind housed within the brain, within the body. And if we examine, so how do we examine the nature of our minds? Well, just stop for one short moment, and there it is, the nature of our mind, open, expansive, vast, illuminated by open intelligence. So we notice when we just tune in for one short moment, we notice everything. We notice everything around us, all the sights and sounds and smells and everyone. And we notice our thoughts, our feelings, physical sensations, everything so rich and vibrant in that one short moment. Now, the way we've been trained to use that vast open intelligence is to narrow down its view in each moment and focus on just a few things at a time. Maybe a physical sensation that just seems so compelling that that's that's all we focus on. Or maybe it's an extreme emotion or trying to understand something. I know for me, I put a lot of, of focus on understanding things. And so it would be like, I would work so hard to understand why something was happening, why was I experiencing something, why were my thoughts working the way they were, why did I think of myself as a very emotional person. And so then again, narrowing that wide open view into the focus on the data the thoughts and experiences. And so we begin to believe that that's all the mind is. A sorting device, a a device that sorts the data into good, bad, indifferent, want to get rid of that, want more of that, and then, and then that's how we go about li- living in each moment. And so we stop again. Well, what is the true nature of our mind? Once we're introduced to open intelligence, then we have the opportunity to take advantage of short moments, to really examine the nature of our mind. But right here, right now, what is going on. And so we see that we we really can't pin it down to our mind being a, a sorting device. Trying to corral the data, herd the data into a narrow little space. And that takes a huge amount of energy and effort. In my experience, in my life, it took all of my energy, all of my vitality, all of my resources, all of my creativity to try and figure out why I was the way I was, why I had the thoughts that I had, and wanting them to be different, wanting them to be better searching for the meaning of existence, searching for the true nature of mind. And so this isn't something that we can think our way into 
from that limited mind, it's through resting and relaxing with everything exactly as it is in each here and now that we begin to get a glimpse of that open, spacious, true nature of mind. So it may seem like there are two things going on where trying to figure it out, but by allowing it to be as it is, that's where we reveal the true nature of the mind. So all of the thinking and try, efforting to figure, striving to understand, that just temporarily narrows the view and thus obstructs, obscures that wide open, spacious, brilliant, shining forth that is the mind, our own open intelligence, completely plugged into the vast open intelligence that underlies everything we experience. So for me, what is rest and relaxation for me? I know that in balanced view, we, we would use the term rest with everything as it is. And <laughs> there were times where I would just feel like rest with this no way, no, I'm going crazy, my mind is going crazy. No, I can't rest. But the term to take a short moment, wow, that, that evoked something else entirely. So I wasn't trying to any longer lay back when I felt like my thoughts and emotions were in chaos, but I could gently relax my body and mind for one short moment. Well, and then the waves of chaos may arise again, but then one more short moment with everything exactly as it is, allowing the chaos to be as it is and coming back again and again and again to just a gentle relaxation in the midst of the data streams flowing along. So what I found, again, in, I can only share my own experience, is that by emphasizing that again and again and again and again, it became natural. The short moments became the predominant, and the data were there along with the short moment of open intelligence. And, and so now, now I understand the term complete relaxation with everything as it is. So not so much laying down as in that sort of relaxation, but finding an ease in the midst of whatever is appearing. So allowing the data to be as they actually are, the dynamic display of open intelligence. But again, this isn't something that we can figure out, that we can strive to come to, to attain, to achieve that. It's simply by emphasizing open intelligence, acknowledging it for short moments, repeated many times. And then we have the support of all the Four Mainstays to simply support that choice. That choice like, oh wow, I remember when I first began to understand about short moments and then I would do my nightly check-in and I would think, I didn't take a single short moment today. 
everything just kind of was the way it was. But somewhere along the line, through my commitment to relying on open intelligence, it just began to assert itself. Open intelligence is our true nature. So naturally, as we acknowledge it, as we emphasize it, it becomes more and more obvious. It's always been there. We just haven't, no one, at least no one told me, well, well look over here. There is a vast open expanse right along with the richness of data in each moment. And so that short moment is like opening a door into that spaciousness of mind. And it's always there. So as I could see that every time I checked in with a short moment, there was a spaciousness of mind. And so my assurance grew, my commitment grew gradually until it became continuous. It always was continuous, but I recognized that open intelligence, it was the only thing going on. The only thing going on. Now, uh, I want to save the, some of the questions for Suda, but the question about friendship, that, that's such a beautiful question. And what came up in listening to that was um, that really everything is relationship. Everything is about being in relationship, in relationship with ourselves, with open intelligence, with everyone around us. We are constantly relating. And in, in harmonizing relationship, I saw very clearly that the first relationship to harmonize was with myself, to come to peace within myself. And as a result of allowing everything about myself and my experience to just be as it is, as it was, as it is, then I began to be able to relate with everyone in any circumstance. We, we learn in the 12 empowerments, empowerments 8 and 9, that relationship true relationship brings only love, openness, respect, open-hearted compassion into every single moment. So we could be talking about the weather. We could be talking about, oh, what type of meal is being prepared. We could be talking about even some of the things that we're thinking and feeling, but the underlying nature of open intelligence supports the communication of just open-hearted, loving compassion. And that's what we begin to dem demonstrate in friendships, in uh, intimate relationships with our families, and then with everyone we meet. What a miraculous way of living to rely on that open, spacious, vast, illuminated mind.